Let me pinch the barb before I put this in the vise. And that's a 2x long. That's yeah, a 2x long hook. It's usually what we use on on these. And I'm going to apply the lead right here, kind of in the center of the hook, and wrap it into place. Just 10 to 15 wraps. Yeah, that's what it said in the book, wasn't it? 10 to 15. Uh -huh. Of yeah. non-lead. Yeah, non-lead wire. You want the uh, center of gravity to be slightly forward from the center of the hook shank. So that, where when he started, at the, at the center kind of he wrapped forward, you can see that the weight's going to be forward. Sure. Alright, well let me kind of pinch the ends down there and shove that together. And now I'm going to attach my thread in front. Probably about an eye width back. Is that what it, what it says there in the instructions? Yeah, one one to one and a half. Okay. And we're going to wrap back over that using wide turns going over the thread over the wire. That's just to kind of keep it keep our thread turns from disappearing. I'll go to the end of the shank, and now I'm going to go back over with some more wide turns again, just to keep those from sinking into the thread and becoming lost. And also notice as he's putting. The wraps uh, between the eye and the, the lead, it kind of helps um, make that transition from the wire to the shank a little smoother. Our, our tail is going to be constructed from uh, fibers from the hair's mask. Let me trim off some of that. All right, we've got that trimmed off. Let that me, comes from the cheek of that mask. Yeah, it does. Let me get rid of some of the actual under fur and we'll just use the more or less kind of a combination of guard hairs and under fur, but we want to kind of even them out just a little bit if we can. Now that tail is going to be equal to two-thirds the length of the hook shank. That's about like that right there. We'll set it in at the bend and then anchor it right there behind the lead. Make sure we haven't slipped any. Let's verify that. Now, let's see, two thirds the length of the shank would be about like that. And that looks to be about right, so we're good there. Let's just wrap over that waist instead of cutting it off, and we'll just bind it into place on, on top of that. Uh, the uh, non-lead wire turns. And now it's time to do the tinsel. And the tinsel is in the recipe calls for gold oval tinsel. And I don't have any gold oval tinsel. I have silver oval tinsel. But what, what, if you're going to use the oval tinsel, just be sure you strip off the end there to tie it on, just like we did the chenille. You know, it, to, get it to, to get it anchored on there, that really helps make it a, a nicer looking fly. Uh, but because this is not a silver ribbed hair's ear, we're going to use some flat gold tinsel so that we end up with a gold ribbed hairs there. And flat tinsel brings its own unique set of problems. If you tie it on the hook like you, you think you normally would on the underside, often it, the doggone flat stuff will fold and end up with the wrong color because it's gold on one side and it's silver on the other side. Well, here's a trick that Gretchen and I learned several years ago that may help you. Notice that I'm tying it on gold side up, kind of at an angle, in the middle of the hook. Now I'm going to wrap this, un or not wrap it, just position it under the hook, pulling it towards the back just like I just did, and I'm going to wrap that into position. And now it's ready to wrap and it won't fold on you, causing the wrong color to show up at the last moment. That's not something you want to have happen. Now I'm going to place that back in the material keeper just to keep it out of my way. Okay, we're going to start wrapping the abdomen, and Al's putting a little bit of dubbing wax on the thread, and then he'll just slightly touch the clump of hair to it, and then he will um, spin it, tapering it so that the first part of that abdomen will be thinner than the last part. And he'll go just about to the midpoint of the shank of the hook, just a little past it. So he's going to wrap forward. 
tapering that body for that abdomen? Gonna need to add a little bit more on there, Gretch. Okay. It's, uh, but it'll be thicker there towards the center. You may notice that there's a slight difference in the body of this fly from what you saw a few minutes ago, and we had it just about done and the phone rang right in the middle of it, so we had to stop and start over, and we started over at the, at the front end of this particular segment, which is the adding of the body. And now we're moving this body up towards the center of the hook. I need just a little bit more dubbing. As soon as he gets this on, then he's going to start wrapping that uh, ribbing forward. And you wrap it to the front of the abdomen using four to six evenly spaced turns. Yeah, and I'm, gonna, I'm going to try to put on five turns. We'll start with one. Two, three, four, and five. All I'm right. going to tie that off with a couple of turns of thread, keeping the... Now the wing case goes on. It's made out of sl out of a slip of uh, turkey tail fibers, and I'm going to just tie that on the hook with the shiny side facing down. Isn't that what it says in the That's instructions? That's what it says in the down. Okay. That's so that when you turn it back over, the shiny side will be up. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Now let's get and that. And be sure that the thread wraps force that wing case against the end of the abdomen there where you stop dubbing. Oh so yeah. You don't have a space. Let's take a look and see if that's going to be okay. Uh, needs to be tied back just a little further. You don't want that Let's check there. that out. Uh, we need some more. We, and we also don't want to hide that last turn of rib. That's real easy to do is to, okay, we still got two, four, five turns of rib. Okay, but I still have a little bit of black thread showing there. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but I can see it here as I look around the end of the camera there that's that's good because we've got the gold tinsel showing right here and uh, we'll lay that back now I'm going to wrap the thread forward <clears throat> almost to that the start of our thread base and then I'm going to fold this wing material wing case material back over and just use it to build up a little bit of bulk so that I have a, a more evenly uh, a more even underbody for the dubbing Okay, we selected a, a little darker uh, bunch of hair from the Harris mask, and uh, we're going to put on some dubbing wax onto the thread, and we want to dub this a little thicker than what we've been doing before, because we want that thorax to be a little bulkier and a little darker than the abdomen. So we'll start with fairly tight twists, and then go to uh, less, and start wrapping that forward to a point, one eye length behind the hook of the eye is where we're going with that. And we want this to be kind of a little bulkier so that the shape of the fly is correct. Now I like to start at the front of my body area and work backwards. I know that may be a little bit different than what you're used to, but I, it's the only way I can get a really good placement of the dubbing, it seems to be right at. That, that fold over point and I want to make sure that that's right back against there otherwise that's going to be another place where I'm going to get a dinger. Now I want to tighten that dubbing up on my thread just a little bit and I'm going to come forward and and now it's now it's time to tie off the wing case. So he's folding that forward and tying it off right there at the eye. Now let's verify that it didn't slip on me. Sometimes they'll slip over to the side and we want to make sure that that looks pretty good. And that's a pretty fair wing case. And, and it's also most he's been pretty careful not to split those hairs on the thorax so that they're off, they're, the wing case is solid over the thorax. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, there we go. And I'm, I'm cutting these fibers out a few at a time rather than all at once so that I don't end up with a big bundle of trim fibers that I have to try to cover up in my head and now I'm going to wrap over those and I'm going to really stabilize that fly as I wrap that head otherwise it bounces around a little too much for me and don't want that to happen. Now 
he can whip finish that. Yeah, I'll put the whip finish on there. And uh, apply some cement. First, to get that cut off. And um, put the cement on that Gretchen was talking about. And remember, I like to, to tilt this guy up so it doesn't run into the hook eye. Otherwise, I'll be unclogging that darn thing out in the river, and I'd rather not do that. Now he's going to uh, kind of tease some of those fibers out on that thorax so it looks a little buggier. And we have just a toothpick with some um, Velcro that's been tied to that. And that works really good or a bodkin works really good to pick those out just pick the ones that you want choose them pull them out but the main thing is to have the the thorax picked out so it looks a little buggy looks a little bit on the buggy side well, i think we're just I about think... ready to evaluate that fly Okay, we're going to start this with the overall appearance and proportion. That looks pretty. It looks pretty good to me. We got everything in ju just about the way we we planned on it. What's the next item? Well, let's look at the material selection. Yeah, we we have darker material in the ab in the thorax, lighter material in the abdomen and the tail. And we did substitute the flat uh, ribbing. Yeah, we have the substituted uh, ribbing, but. Uh, it, it turns out looking okay. What's next, sweetheart? So the, the tail. The tail. The tail is um, equal to two-thirds the length of the shank, and that's pretty close to the case. And you already measured that, so yeah. we know we're good there. And then the body. Body is uh, about uh, two-thirds, one-third, and that's that's where we are right now. And then, of course, the ribbing. And the ribbing uh, has five turns, and they're fairly evenly spaced until we get to the last one. And that last one... Is a little bit more space than the previous one right here, and I'm gonna have a demerit on that. I get I get one point off there. Okay, okay. We've got our thorax, and we did find some darker dubbing. That's looking good. All right. Wing case. Wing case is uh, evenly placed, not split, as uh, we think it should be. Next item. Okay, and that's the last, and that's the head. And that's the head, and uh, it looks like it's uh, the head is well done. It's okay, perfect we, size and everything. We have um, a possible 27 points on this one, and you need 21 to pass. And we're, we've uh, had one dinger, so we're going to get a 26 on this, but that's still a passing score. I should have been more careful with that last turn of ribbing. I just didn't. 